Welcome back to our thrilling tale of FNF characters in space. When we last left our band of intrepid animatronics, Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, Freddy, and Scraptrap had experienced something chilling. A specter from their past, Springtrap, who they'd forcibly ejected into the cold void of space somehow against all odds, made a haunting return. In the silence of Foxy's room, an eerie message popped up on the computer screen, the words, I always come back. Casting a shadow of dread, the shock was palpable, the realization that Springtrap was still in the game sending a shiver down their mechanical spines, but the nightmare didn't stop there. As the screen flickered the unsettling image of withered Bonnie, bound and helpless, was seared into their memory circuits. The stakes had never been higher. And so with a cryptic message and the sight of withered Bonnie tied up, our heroes prepared for a journey back to space. With the threat of Springtrap looming, our heroes make their way to the rocket ship. As the gravity of the situation sinks in, Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, Freddy and Scraptrap are quick to take action. Their familiar surroundings of the pizzeria fade into the background as they speed towards their space-bound vessel. The journey is tense, the air thick with anticipation and fear. Foxy, ever the tech whiz, makes a beeline for the computer room. His fingers dance over the keys, eyes scanning lines of code, messages, anything that could hold the key to their predicament. The others watch on, their faith in Foxy unwavering, he's pulled them out of tight spots before and they're counting on him to do it again. Suddenly the computer screen flickers, a message pops up, chilling to the core. I always come back, it reads, Springtrap. The name alone is enough to send a shiver down their spines. He was supposed to be gone, thrown out of the spaceship window by Scraptrap himself, and yet here he was, a phantom in the machine, taunting them from afar. The room falls silent as the message sinks in. Then, a video feed flickers to life on the screen. It's withered Bonnie, their beloved friend, bound and helpless. The sight of him sends a shockwave through the group. The reality of Springtrap's threat becomes all too real. Springtrap's voice echoes from the speakers, his words a chilling promise. I have come back, he announces, and this time I've taken withered Bonnie. The video feed cuts out, leaving our heroes in stunned silence. The stakes have never been higher. The tape ends, their destination, the moon. With renewed determination they prepare for the journey ahead. The moon's desolate landscape awaits them, along with the unknown threat of Springtrap. One thing's for sure they won't back down, they will save their friend, or go down fighting. As they touch down on the moon's surface an unexpected sight greets them. Out of the inky blackness of space an alien ship emerges, its form vaguely familiar yet distinctly otherworldly. Its gleaming hull reflecting the ghostly light of distant stars is a stark contrast to the barren lunar landscape. It moves with a purpose, a silent predator in the sea of tranquility. Panic sets in, the sight of the alien ship sends a jolt through their circuits. Foxy's eyes dart towards the computer screen, where the alien ship's trajectory is plotted. It's coming straight for them, there's no time to waste. Bonnie's guitar drops with a clatter, forgotten, as they scramble back into their rocket. The hasty retreat is punctuated by the whirring of servos and the frantic clatter of metal feet against the metallic floor of the spaceship. The rocket's engines roar to life, casting long, menacing shadows over the moon's surface. The door slides shut, sealing them away from the lunar surface and the approaching threat. As they ascend, the alien ship is hot on their heels. The chase is on. The moon, once a beacon of hope and safety, now recedes in the rearview mirror replaced by a sea of stars and an alien ship. The chase, as surreal as it is, is a high-speed dance between two ships amongst the stars. The adrenaline rush, the fear, the uncertainty, it all blends into a symphony of chaos. Freddy's voice cuts through the commotion, a beacon of reason amidst the pandemonium. His plan is simple, yet daring, a testament to their desperation. The supply closet door creaks open revealing an arsenal of ray guns. The stakes are high, the odds stacked against them, but they have no choice, they must fight. With an alien ship on their tail, they must prepare for a fight. Inside the rocket, Freddy and Scraptrap make their battle plans. Mm, the tension in the air is palpable, a sharp contrast to the cold, silent void of space outside. Their mission, to rescue their friend Withered Bonnie from the clutches of the relentless Springtrap. Freddy, the de facto leader, decides on a course of action. I am going to use a ray gun, he declares his own firm, confident, the ray gun, while unconventional, offers the advantage of being specially designed for space combat. It's a tool for a modern age, a symbol of their adaptability in the face of adversity. 
Scraptrap, however, has a different idea. Hand me a real gun, he requests, his voice rough around the edges. He's a fighter, a survivor. He believes in the power of tangible, tried and true weaponry. But space is a different battlefield, where the rules of physics don't always apply as they do on Earth. Freddy is quick to point out the potential pitfalls of Scraptrap's plan. That's too dangerous, he warns. The ammo will just fly into your face. His concern is valid. In the weightless environment of space, the recoil from a traditional firearm could send bullets flying in unpredictable directions, potentially causing more harm to them than to their enemy. But Scraptrap is undeterred. I'll be fine, he retorts. His echoing in the confined space. There's a certain stubbornness in his voice, a refusal to back down. He's determined to stick to his guns, quite literally, and face the dangers head on. As the debate subsides, a sense of resolution settles in. They each have their chosen weapons, their own strategies. They're ready to face whatever spring trap throws their way. With their weapons chosen, they make their way to the roof. The battle is about to begin. The fate of Withered Bonnie hangs in the balance, but one thing is certain, they won't go down without a fight. On top of the rocket, our heroes find themselves confronting their foes. The scene that met their gaze was one of unyielding resolve and bone-chilling malevolence. Standing before them was Springtrap, his figure highlighted against the cold, lifeless illumination of the far-off stars. Alongside him the disassembled body of Withered Bonnie, a grim symbol of the high stakes at play. Springtrap's eyes sparkled with a spectral light, mirroring the malevolent plots concealed within his metallic shell, his voice a terrifying blend of malignance and mirth, reverberated in the boundless celestial expanse. I always return, he uttered, his tone bearing a menacing threat. His words, akin to an icy gust, sent chills coursing down their backs. Abruptly, a new instrument of horror emerged in his grasp. It was a rocket launcher, its lethal capability aimed squarely at our heroes. The sight of it was sufficient to petrify their circuits, the import of this new twist making itself known to them. The circumstances had escalated from grim to grimmer in mere moments, as the frigid brutal reality of their predicament started to permeate their consciousness. Springtrap laughed. It was a sound absent of any warmth or humor, a sound that resonated ominously in the quiet vacuum of space. Best of luck, he scoffed, his voice saturated with scorn, it won't conclude favorably for you boys. The tension in the air was tangible. The heroes, although terrified, held their ground, their determination solidifying. They would not be scared. They would not retreat. They would resist. Springtrap's statements linger in the air, a frosty omen of impending peril. The face-off had commenced. Against the backdrop of the limitless universe a savage contest of survival was set to unfold. The stakes were enormous, the odds were not in their favor but they were prepared. After all they were not ordinary animatronics. They were the champions of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, and they were not going to be defeated without a struggle. Having accepted the challenge, the heroes leap into action. With the rocket's roof as their battleground, Freddy and Scraptrap take a daring leap onto nearby asteroids, Springtrap hot on their heels. The clash is nothing short of cinematic, a cosmic ballet of metal and determination. The heroes, displaying their agility and quick thinking, attempt to destroy the ground beneath Springtrap. They dodge, they weave, they leap from one asteroid to another, their every move a calculated attempt to gain the upper hand. But Springtrap is not so easily outwitted. With a sudden blast from his rocket launcher, he sends Freddy and Scraptrap hurtling through space, landing them on the icy surface of Uranus. The impact is colossal, the icy surface of the planet shattering beneath their weight. Springtrap, seizing the moment, attempts to shoot them down, his rocket launcher roars to life, sending a volley of explosive rounds towards the duo. The destruction is immense, chunks of Uranus being blasted into the cosmos. Freddy and Scraptrap manage to evade the majority of the attacks, but a lucky shot sends them flying back towards the moon. Back on the rocket. Foxy is frantically steering the ship towards the moon, his circuits working over time. Meanwhile, Springtrap, having lost his ray gun in the chaos, lunges at the duo with a mighty punch. The final battle is about to commence, and the odds are far from certain. Will our heroes prevail, or will Springtrap finally have his revenge? The fate of Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria hangs in the balance. Back on the moon, the final showdown between Freddy, Scraptrap, and Springtrap begins. 
The lunar surface becomes their battlefield, the silent vacuum of space their soundtrack. Springtrap, fueled by vengeance, lunges at Freddy, his metallic hands wrapping around his neck. Freddy struggles, his servos whirring in protest but the strength of Springtrap is overwhelming. Scraptrap, seeing his companion in danger, rushes to his aid. He charges at Springtrap, tackling him with all his might. The two tumble across the moon's surface, their struggle kicking up clouds of lunar dust. The fight is brutal, the stakes are high and every second counts. Meanwhile, Foxy is pushing the rocket to its limits, the ship screaming through the void of space. His circuits are on fire, his systems push to the brink, but he doesn't falter. The sight of the moon grows larger in the viewport, signaling that they are closing in on their destination. Back on the moon, the fight reaches its climax. Freddy and Scraptrap, battered and bruised, stand their ground as Springtrap advances. The tension is palpable, the uncertainty gnawing at their circuits. Their eyes flicker towards the star-studded sky, waiting for the arrival of their last hope. As the dust settles, the fate of our heroes hangs in the balance. Will Foxy make it in time? Will Freddy and Scraptrap hold their ground? Or will Springtrap finally claim his victory? The outcome of this battle will determine the fate of Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. As the moon showdown rages on, we cut back to Foxy, his metallic hand gripping the ship's control stick with all his might. His servos strain and whir in protest, his circuits push to their limits, but he doesn't falter. His gaze locked on the moon growing larger in the viewport. Suddenly, a spark flies from the control panel, a circuit breaking under the pressure. The ship lurches, veering off course. Foxy's eyes widen, the moon disappearing from the viewport to be replaced by the swirling gas giant Jupiter. Bonnie, hearing the commotion, rushes in, his quick thinking saving them from complete disaster. He lunges for the controls, his fingers dancing over the buttons and switches, trying to correct their course but it's too late. With a deafening roar, they collide with Jupiter the impact sending them spiraling into the unknown, their ship once a beacon of hope now damaged and off course, the moon, their destination, now a distant dream. As the ship spins wildly, the fate of Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria and our heroes hangs in the balance. Would they be able to correct their course and reach the moon in time to aid their friends? Or are they destined to be lost in space forever? The stakes have never been higher. With the ship spiraling out of control, Bonnie springs into action. His purple fur bristles as he unbuckles and rushes to the emergency gas tank, his movements swift and determined in the weightless environment. His fingers, adept from years of playing guitar, twist the valve open, filling up the tank with the precious fuel they need to correct their course. The ship's interior lights flicker and dim, casting eerie shadows around the ship. The sound of straining metal echoes through the cabin, a constant reminder of their dire situation. Suddenly the door to the engine room slides open, revealing Chica. Her yellow feathers are ruffled and she's carrying a toolbox in her beak. She gives Bonnie a nod, her eyes reflecting the same determination he feels. Chica is ready to repair the damage, to get them back on track. Bonnie glances at the viewport, where Jupiter's swirling storms fill the view. He turns back to his task, his grip on the gas tank tightening. They have a long way to go but with Bonnie and Chica working together, there's a glimmer of hope for our heroes. The question remains, will they be able to repair the ship and reorient their course in time to aid their friends in the moon showdown? Only time will tell. As the battle between Freddy, Scraptrap and Springtrap rages on the asteroid, an unexpected sound fills the air. The engine of Bonnie and Chica's spaceship roars to life, its guttural growl echoing through the vast emptiness of space. The ship surges forward, driven by the desperate efforts of the two brave crew members. The raw power of their acceleration is so intense that it rips a hole in the fabric of space-time, creating a swirling vortex of darkness and unending gravity. A black hole. The black hole grows larger and larger, its gravitational pull so intense that it starts to suck in everything around it. The asteroids dance and twirl in a deadly ballet, drawn towards the abyss. And then it happens. Our heroes, Freddy Scraptrap, Bonnie and Chica, along with their adversary Springtrap, are caught in the pull of the black hole. Their efforts to escape prove futile against the black hole's relentless pull. One by one, they are sucked into the unknown, their cries of surprise and fear swallowed by the black hole. As the last of them disappears into the vortex, the black hole shrinks and vanishes, leaving no trace of the turmoil it has caused. The only evidence of their existence is the empty space where they once were, and the question that hangs in the air, what will become of them? Reeling from the cataclysmic event, our heroes find themselves in an unknown realm, 
their surroundings a whirl of darkness and strange celestial bodies. As they struggle to recover from the wreckage, a familiar voice echoes through the void. The voice is warm, comforting, a stark contrast to the cold, silent abyss they find themselves in. Slowly, the source of the voice comes into view, a group of unexpected allies, none other than Mickey Mouse, Daisy, Donald Duck, Goofy, and Minnie. With them is a mysterious creature, its identity concealed by a cloak of shadows. Springtrap, with his menacing red eyes, recovers first. He kicks Bonnie in the face, asserting his dominance. Foxy, with only one circuit working, struggles to his feet only to see the new arrivals. The sight of the Disney characters in such a grim situation would have been comical under different circumstances, but the gravity of their situation is all too real. Springtrap, upon seeing the new arrivals, attacks Mickey's crew, escalating the conflict. But much to everyone's surprise, the Disney characters put up a formidable fight, their cheerful exteriors belying their battle prowess. The mysterious creature too reveals its strength, its cloak of shadows transforming into tendrils of darkness that ensnare Springtrap. With new allies and a renewed threat, the fate of our heroes hangs in the balance. Will they be able to escape this strange realm and defeat Springtrap once and for all? The next chapter of their journey is about to unfold. As our heroes stand their ground, preparing for another showdown with Springtrap, the universe throws another curveball their way. Suddenly, a giant black hole appears, its pull stronger than anything they had ever experienced. The spaceship is sucked in, its hull creaking under the immense gravitational force. The Disney crew, their expressions filled with horror, are left behind, unable to assist their newfound friends. Inside the spaceship, our heroes brace themselves as the world around them swirls into a vortex of darkness. They can see Springtrap, his menacing red eyes glowing in the black void, closing in on them. The tension is palpable, the fear real, but amidst the chaos, there is a sense of determination, of resilience that shines through. Just when all hope seems lost, with a sudden jolt, they find themselves back in familiar space. Springtrap, unable to control his trajectory, collides with Saturn and is flung into the abyss, his menacing figure disappearing into the vast expanse. Our heroes, though shaken, are safe. For now, the fight isn't over, but for now, they can breathe a sigh of relief, ready to face whatever challenges the universe throws their way next.